Hollow Knight was released on February 24, 2017, by the game designers R. Gibson and William Pellin, and the composer Christopher Larkin as the creator for the game's incredible soundtrack. This game received incredible reviews and is rated overwhelmingly positive on Steam, as well as has a large community of speedruns and memes. I played this game about a year or two ago and instantly fell in love with it. Its art style, the story, the beautiful immersive gameplay with the best boss fights I've ever had the pleasure of experiencing. Everything flows in together so beautifully that I, I've attempted multiple speedruns on the game and I don't even like speedrunning. I beat every boss, gotten every achievement, and watched so many playthroughs I've lost count. I wanted to vent my astonishment for this game and address its pros and cons. Way more pros, by the way. In this video, I will be going into an in-depth analysis of Hollow Knight by Team Cherry. The story of Hollow Knight is told in such a beautiful way, with twisting passages leading to blips of text foretelling the secrets of the kingdom, giant structures that really make you theorize and ponder. I'm usually not a fan of text-driven storytelling, but this game does it so well and so subtly that it all slowly clicks into place without you even realizing it. The story is probably the most immersive I've ever seen, along with Five Nights at Freddy's and The Forest. It has such a mellow tone, and it perfectly fits in within the game world. The story of Hollow Knight starts as any good game has started, with very minor exposition, and you're thrown directly into the vast world. You can see this being done in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Shadow of the Colossus. The game throws you in as a wandering knight, falling into the depth of an ancient kingdom littered with mysterious creatures and a few friendly faces. You delve into the depths of the kingdom, getting further and further down until finding larger palaces, cities of perpetual rain, and ancient abysses that seem to be com composed of entire corpses. The game's storytelling is still being debated, and people are still theorizing on things. This makes for some of the most alluring storytelling I've ever seen in a game. I think the immersion of this game is comparable with games like Little Nightmares, Breath of the Wild, and Subnautica, which all take immersion in setting a scene to a new level. The soft breeze and jiggling tune of Kakariko Village in Breath of the Wild is study music on another level. And the eerie silence and suspense of Little Nightmares. What, what a beautiful horror game it is. These components are essential for a game's world building, and a Hollow Knight does it astronomically well. There isn't a better way to tell you about how good the immersion is than by just showing you. Take a look.
this immersion really grows on you, and the art style definitely helps that. The amazing work of Arya and William on this environment is the best I've ever seen in the game. If I even tried to draw one of those floor textures, it would not look the best. And I actually have. I was immensely inspired by the artwork. And of course, my inspiration was broken instantly when I realized how much better the game's artwork was. I could spend hours wandering the passages of this world. This kingdom is called Hollowness, so I'm just gonna call it that from now on. Because it's just so peaceful. Well, until freaking Primal Aspen attacks you, so I hate these things! The immersion of the game really ties together the amazing story of the best world I've ever seen built in the game. The gameplay of Hollow Knight is probably the main attraction for me. I love challenging things, and if it's challenging and freaking awesome, I'm gonna throw myself at it for days. This game's combat starts off slow, with only a couple moves, the down slash, up slash, and side slash. This can be used together in perfect harmony, even allowing for interesting combat with literally three moves. The down slash can be used to pogo enemies, kind of like Mario jumping on a Goomba. And the side slash can be used to get small speed boosts off walls. These can be used for speed runs, and you can go places even faster and make even more shortcuts. After beating the first boss, you can obtain the Vengeful Spirit upgrade, allowing a concentrated fireball blast that does triple damage in the starting nail of the sword you use. It can also be used in perfection to skip large portions of the map with very precise fireball skips, which consists of fireballing backwards and getting a slight vertical boost to make it further places that would require a dash. The further you get into the game, the more interesting the combat. You unlock charms, nail upgrades, nail arts, a double jump, a dash, a super jump, a slam attack, and more. You can even dash through enemies with a certain upgrade, and using these in succession with high levels of skill can be used to kill the hardest bosses in around 30 seconds. This game is hard, and I mean harder than the average game. Beating this boss on screen without getting hit took me multiple days and hours of practice. I even did it again just for this recording. Some may call this masochism, but really it's just me wanting to enjoy more of this game because I don't want the content to end, even though it sadly has. The challenge that makes you feel like a god when you beat these harder bosses, and the game even has a place for you to practice. Now they aren't the hardest, and in fact the harder bosses aren't even needed to complete three of the six endings, but if you want to get the others, god forbid, you're gonna have to endure a pantheon of bosses. And I mean that. The final challenge of the game is called the Pantheon of Hollow Nests, which consists of beating every single boss in the game without break. And that's about 45 bosses. Some of these can kill you in seconds, and you really have to know how to control the character. That's what I love most about this game. You have to know the game well to play it well. There's no easy way around it. The combat beautifully knots together everything in the game as it comes full circle. Being good at this game can be such a satisfying feeling. Coming back to the first boss after 100%ing the game is like child's play. You realize how far you've come after all that time and you can so easily beat the boss. You may think I'm a bit unqualified to talk about these insane challenges but I beg to differ. I may not be the best at the game, or even comparable to most speedrunners, but I can say I have no hit every boss in the game and completed the Pantheon of Hollownest, and I can safely say that I am in love with the combat. <laughs> 
if you haven't already noticed, I love this game. And I think anyone watching this should try it out. I try not to spoil the story and didn't give away any of the bosses' names so you could have the beautiful experience that I had. And if you're worrying about running out of content, don't worry, because by the time you finish the game, the sequel Hollow Knight Silk Song is probably going to be out. This game is said to be even larger than the original game. You literally play as one of the bosses from the original game. I think that pretty much everyone can enjoy this game. And really the only people I don't see enjoying it are people that don't like 2D games or are just not as determined to get better. I've seen complaints about the combat, it, as in it doesn't get hard fast enough. But in my opinion, if the game got too hard too fast, a lot of people really wouldn't want to continue. I have around 240 hours in the game, and 120 of those are for my first playthrough. And I still find stuff I've never found. I really recommend this game, and although I'm not known to give 10 out of 10s, I think this is one of the only games I would ever give a 10 out of 10, on par with Minecraft and Terraria. This game is beautiful, and I hope you start your journey ahead. Thank <laughs> you. 